Hi, Ali Mishinji here at Florida Jets 2023. I'm going to do a quick, well, it's probably not going to be quick, I'm not going to lie, so much to talk about, but a little bit of a talk through on Hangar 9's latest release and very much a first for us here at Horizon Hobby and Hangar 9. It's the all new Hangar 9 MB339. And this is a project that I've been involved with from the very conception. Um, I took the idea to my bosses back in 2018. Uh, the mindset was I wanted an everyman's jet, a jet that would ease the transition for people who were wanting to get into turbine flight, but maybe a little bit scared or maybe a little bit concerned about the hurdles per se. So um, it's taken a long time to come to fruition. Uh, look, some of that has been development. A lot of it has been silly little things like um, compliance testing of the undercarriage, a not so silly little thing like COVID came along and delayed us for over a year. Um, that was a, a big setback. But here we are, we've got it, we debuted it today. This is the very first day that the public have seen it. Uh, Florida Jets, we couldn't think of a better place to announce it and show it to the public for the first time. We have awesome weather. We have three of them here. Uh, my colleague Dustin Boucher has joined me. He has one of the production samples, um, which is this one, funny enough. This is Dustin's personal plane. And uh, the other two, one of them's our development mule. It's prototype number two. So it's had well over 200 flights put through it. And uh, yeah, no other time better, I guess, than to talk through some of the interesting backstories, I guess, and uh, some of the facts and figures. Facts and figures. 84-inch uh, wingspan is what a lot of people are asking. It's a scale-ish, semi-scale model of an MB339, and that was deliberate. I wanted an airplane that was super easy to fly, friendly, um, lightly loaded, but still resembled a full-scale airplane. You know, I, I, whilst I was aiming for a sport jet performance, I still wanted to have the lines of a full-scale airplane, and uh, nothing does it better for me than an MB339. If you look at the plan form, it's like an ideal sport pattern plane. I mean, if we took the turbine away from the middle and put an engine in the front, it's like an old-school aerobat from yesteryear. So we started with a very, very friendly, easy to work with plan form, platform, layout, whatever you want to call it. And um, then the next uh, most important thing was making it friendly, making it easy to fly. And for me, the, the, the easiest way to do that is make it light. So what we have here is 84 inches at a flying weight of about 23 pounds. And I say about because we've got an engine scope. We uh, flew the prototype, I flew the prototype with the 60 size, King Tech 60 turbine initially. And uh, we have the development airplanes flying on K85s and K70s. And um, I, if I'm honest, I like the lighter setup, the K70, but it flies just as well with the 85. Um, so I say 23 pounds-ish, all up. Um, another really key and important aspect of making this an every man's jet is the price point. Um, that was probably my second hurdle that I set out in my scope and said, look, I need to offer a jet that is, I'm never going to say cheap because getting into turbines isn't really feasible in a cheap way. Um, inexpensive or affordable is a term that I prefer. And uh, I think we achieved that. I think we bought a decent sized airplane to market, and by decent, I mean big enough to fly well, present well, be visible, small enough that it still transports easily. It breaks down into two wings, two stabs, and a few large sections, so it can fit into a reasonably small car. But I managed to hit a price point of $1,599. $1, so sub $1,600, you get an airplane, uh, retracts, wheels, brakes, tailpipe and fuel system. So you have an overall airframe platform, which um, I think I'm super proud of. I'm hoping it will give people the impetus to make that move from away from you know, different other segments and try turbines. There's, they're a lot of fun. I mean, I'm biased because I fly them a lot, but I fly a lot of other stuff and I keep coming back to turbines as being fun and accessible and exciting. So yeah. Following on from that price point, um, my colleague Dustin Bush has worked really hard to make a combo package available. So we have teamed up with King Tech, um, very, very famous, one of the leaders in the turbine world, and been able to offer two particular combos, which is the Aeroplane and K70, and the Aeroplane and K85 combo. Um, put that into perspective, we have the, end, the, the whole airframe, the $1,600 airframe, combined with the um, K85 
70 yeah, turbine the drawing, at 3,289. And it's a weird mount, that's how combos yeah, work. But sub like $3,300, you can get the aeroplane and turbine. So, yeah, again, I'm not going to say no. that's cheap, but in relative terms to the other turbine packages that are available out there, it's very well priced. Um, maybe come in, Zav, and we'll show you some of the internals. Or the big one, Put them both in there. Yeah, you get twice as many things. The heart, I guess, the, the bit that everyone wants to see is the turbine. This is one of those packages I was explaining, the Kingtech K70, 70 newtons of thrust. A US supplied, US backed company, um, very, very famous. So lots and lots of uh, backup service available um, from this particular brand. So it's one of the main reasons why we chose to go with them, knowing that we could get people set up in the turbine world and they're going to be looked after. Um, 70 newtons of thrust, as I said, more than enough for this aeroplane. I wouldn't say it's unlimited vertical by any means, but again, that was part of the design scope. I didn't want a 200 mile an hour sport jet. I wanted an easy to fly, everyday, relaxing, chilled jet. And um, yeah, the 70 works perfectly with that in mind. Um, fuel tank that you see here, it runs from about there and there specially made fuel system. On the K70, we get flight times between six to eight minutes, depending how much throttle you use. You may be able to see on the camera the construction method, which is a carbon ply um, sandwich. I did that with the factory to get the weight down. On occasion, we have to do this. The initial uh, prototype was all plywood, and um, it was great, it flew really well, but again, go back to the light loaded setup. Um, we went with the carbon sandwich, which <laughs> saved number, it, about 10, 15%. Number, one, so. three, five, six. You might be able to see the foam, um, one, we call faux indeed, carbon five. lining. Donate that is, um, whilst the airplane is all balsa and ply, the lining is a foam material. It's not structural, it is purely an aesthetic to make the airplane look prettier. Here, we'll it's secondary um, outcome no, we'll is that it makes the fuselage much more rigid so and less um, prone to denting which I'm super happy about that's uh, something again that, that worked out uniquely to this project retracts are our own retract system developed for the airplane electric wheels and brakes um, so no need for air systems which is super cool nice slow retraction speed main wheel brakes um, come as standard it's a mandatory a requirement in the US to have an aeroplane that has a brake system, so we built that in from the get-go. Two-piece wings, as I said, completely toolless assembly. We have a third hatch, never have too many hatches, but yeah, there's a third hatch under there so I can access the toolless assembly wing bolts, so I can just pop the wings off here and here. You have two-piece wings. You have removable drop tanks or wing tanks, two three, three millimeter bolts. Removable stab. Again, a one three millimeter bolt, same size driver for everything on this airplane, um, so not too many tools needed. Removable ventral fins, so if you want to um, okay, not damage them during three, transit, five, um, also if you damage them, they're, one, they're easy three, to replace five, and repair. Uh, we have combos for the K70 and the K85, but we also have combos for the aeroplane and servos as well. So those will go live on Tuesday after the launch. So three or four, five days after we film this video. The aeroplane is live now on horizonhobby.com, so you can order it. And um, yeah, they're available. I strongly recommend pre ordering um, only because. The pre-ordering well, is non-committal, you don't have to pay well, up front, and you secure the first order, which I'm pretty sure is going to sell out. Yes. Judging by the feedback we're getting, the reaction, also the sales rate here in the first six hours has been better than expected. So yeah, anyone who's remotely interested, I really do recommend pre-ordering. Um, and that's about it. I mean, I could talk for hours about the development of this airplane, how long it took, why we did it and so forth, but maybe that's something else for another video. Right, for now, that you. gives you an overview. We Sorry a, if we had any uh, background noise history. coming through. We're doing this Where live and organic a, um, active event, so they're doing some sort of raffle. I hope it doesn't encroach on uh, your enjoyment of this video and information. Please look out for it. I'm sure we're gonna see a bunch of these turning up across events and across flying fields, club fields um, around the world, because we have them going to Europe as well. Um, and that, I've to me, nothing else would make me happier. I'd love to see more people People really get started the in the turbine section. So, uh, yeah, with that said, thank you very much for joining in and listening. And, um, yeah, take care. The prize is a